had a great turnout for this day of food and fellowship. Remember, high school seniors, applications for the Father Dell Scholarship are still being accepted. Visit the Faith Formation page on our website or stop by the parish office for more information. Liturgical volunteers, if you need more help with how to use the new scheduling system, Frank will be hosting an in-person group training this Wednesday after daily mass at 12.30 p.m. in the community room. You are encouraged to bring your laptop or tablet to this training. If you would like to participate in Holy Thursday's foot washing ritual, a sign-up sheet is available at the main entrance. Limited spots are available. The solo group will be meeting this Sunday in the community room at 1 p.m. Please check out the bulletin and the parish website for these and other announcements regarding events going on in the life of St. Gabriel. We ask now that you silence all electronic devices as our liturgy is about to begin. This Mass is offered in thanksgiving for Marcelina and Bruce Graham. Happy anniversary. The entrance hymn today is in... No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Just turn your attention toward here, and we begin our celebration together on this special week up. My sisters and brothers in Christ, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that Jesus entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, 
with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the law entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partaker of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. So this time I invite you to hold up your palm. I'll do the blessing prayer now, and as we possess in, then I will sprinkle with holy water of your palm. And so let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, we ask that you sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ, the King of exaltation, may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So keep holding your palm as the procession going through you, then I will bless the song. And the music is on the word sheets in the pews. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And with your spirit. We're to welcome everyone to this most holy week of the year. All the five weeks of land had led, led us to this time. Are we prepared to go and walk closely with Christ in this holy week as Jesus will do his life, death, and resurrection to redeem and save us. So let us resolve in this week to follow Christ more closely. And so let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow calls your Savior to take flesh 
and submit to the cross graciously. Grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. doers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. I Claim your name to my 
midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him. All you descendants of Israel, A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus. Every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Because of the length of the Passion reading, please be seated. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, not during the festival, for fear that there may be a riot among the people. When he was in Bethany, 
reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? I please do not uh, read. We have the readers up here, so we're not reading as you hear. You can follow the text, but not, don't do any part the readers are up here to do that. It could have been sold for more than 300 days wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you. And whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the 12, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, when, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish, for the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread and gave the blessing, broke it and gave it to them, and he said, Take it, this is my body. And then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus, remember me.
Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the arm might pass him by. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned and found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up. Let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priest, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal for, with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out against the robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But that the scriptures may be fulfilled, and they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. They led Jesus away to the high priest. And all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? 
What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophesy! And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately, a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him, Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. 
The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple and, weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and dressed him in his own clothes and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drug with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, King of the Jews. With him they crucified, crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests and the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama shabachthani, which is translated, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked the sponge with wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. I invite you to, I invite you to please kneel for a few moments to commemorate Jesus' death. I invite you to please stand and remain standing for the rest of the Passion reading. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, truly this man was the son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James and of Joses, and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. 
When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joses, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated for a few moments. What are we supposed to do as we enter this holy week? So today the church gives us what to reflect upon, the passion reading, which is the live death of Jesus Christ, according to Mark. If you've been reading the black book, you already have begun this passion reading according to Luke. When you come on Good Friday, the church will proclaim the same story, the passion of Jesus according to John. So in the short extension, we have three different accounts of the life suffering, pain, suffering, and death of Jesus before the resurrection. So I want to take, touch on three minor points uniquely about Mark Passion Reading. Our OCIA had reflected this past Tuesday. One of unique feature of Mark Gospel is the beginning of the story. Remember, there was a woman came to Jesus you know, at the Passover, what does she, what does she bring with her? Perfume, right? So, if you have a very expensive perfume, how much do you use each time? <laughs> Just a little bit. The more expensive, probably the, the less you use, right? But what happened in the story? This woman had this expensive perfume. How did he how did she anoint Jesus? She broke the whole jar off and poured on Jesus. No wonder people said, What a waste! You can sell this for a lot of money for the poor. But consider what this woman had recognized, and what, who did she recognize in this man named Jesus? He's worth it. That's the question, isn't it? If, they, if we know who it is that we are walking with in this holy week, we would walk with him, perhaps to the end, just like this woman who recognized in Jesus, she broke it all, give it all to Christ. So this challenge of our Holy Week, is Jesus the one worth spend time to walk and to be with? All the five weeks, what we have done is leading us to this essential challenge. It's not about how good you were and you fasting and praying. You know, hopefully all of that help us to meet this challenge. Have we encountered Jesus? He's worth our time. First point. Second point. Remember middle in the middle? You know, 
many afraid to even walk the cross with Jesus. There's a few people. And there is that young man. He wore what? You know, the white garment, right? So what happened to him? At least we acknowledge that he's at least courageous enough to follow the crowd, right? What happened to him? As they followed, as he followed Jesus, people recognized him. What happened? They grabbed him. So what happened? Whoa, he was afraid and ran. Left his white garment. So what is this symbolize? What is this white garment? You know, if you come to Easter Vigil, when the church baptized, what did the church put on? The newly baptized. A white garment. We have a unique one. Have you seen one? The one that we put on, on the newly baptized could be like the scene, you know, in the story, right? Because it's not very secure. <laughs> it could be ripped off. So what white garment is more secure? Look it up here. What are they wearing? White. They are very secure white, right? Because that's baptism garment. Now as people identify and exercise their ministry, they live with that reality. Even priests, look at that. I have the white garment here too called the out, but it's symbolized to the baptismal garment that when you exercise ministry, Jesus' ministry, you begin with that. That's the water. That's the identity. That's, you know, the repentance of purity. That's what God created us as a new beginning. Everything white is connected to that, a new beginning. On your wedding day, wedding dress, what's what you wear? White. You know, so it is in this case, you know, to help us to know, you know, we wear our identity, what happened? We encounter the world, we encounter everything in our lives. Are we courageous enough to withstand? Are we like that man, ran away, gave up? That's another point of, of reflection for us according to Mark. Is Jesus worth spend time with like that woman? Are we courageous enough to withstand when we are tested? How do you know when your faith is strong? When you are tested. So don't pretend that we have a strong faith. It might be. But unless we are tested, we don't know how strong our faith is. Second point. Third point. Third point. At the end of the reading today, at Calvary, when Jesus was crucified, and when he died, what happened? What happened when Jesus died? Suddenly darkness came over. What happened in the sanctuary? The veil torn in two. So the veil is where the holy of the holy in the temple, right? What happened in the holy of the holy in Jerusalem temple? Nobody go there. Once a year, the elected high priest have the duty on behalf of the people to make atonement for the people. So that's where God dwell. What happened when that door opened? God is revealed, right? How does God how does God reveal in the scene of Calvary when that Roman soldier went 
at exactly when Jesus had died. What did he say? Truly, this is the Son of God. All of that is help us to be what is fully revealed. Are we recognizing the one that we're following? Is God is really true in your life and mine and in this world? That's what this beginning of Holy Week is about. So, are you ready to follow the Lord closely so that he can take you not only to Jerusalem, the highest point, to the Good Friday, the lowest point, so that through darkness and death that God raised his son so that the fulfillment of what Jesus promised for you and I, for all generations, would be fulfilled and recognized as the Redeemer and Savior of the world. So may we take this week, whatever version of the life, suffering, and death of Jesus, may it help us to resolve to follow Christ more closely as we participate in these most holy liturgy of the Tridium and ultimately the Easter season. I invite you to please stand on page 9. Let us renew our faith in the Lord Jesus as we profess together, saying, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. And invisible. I believe, I believe in, in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the only, only begotten Son, Son of God, born of, born of the Father before all ages, ages God from God, God, light from light, true God from true God, God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became for our, our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, who will come again in glory to judge living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and his Son, who with the Father and His Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord was obedient even unto death. May we be obedient to the responsibility we were given at baptism and pray for the needs of our world. For the church, that she celebrate the liturgies of this holiest week of the year with sincerity and solemnity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, that he may be always filled with the wisdom, consolation, and strength of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For government leaders, that they recognize the people and places suffering and in need of new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For our parish community, that we renew our commitment to living as Jesus' disciple this Holy Week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the elect and candidates, that they may open their hearts and minds to receive God's gift of new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our sick who is Dick Cullen, and the deceased, Evelyn Mirador, and Bertilia Ramirez, that the Lord may comfort the sick 
and welcomed the deceased into his kingdom as he comforted and welcomed the repentant thief. We pray to the Lord. For our own special needs, those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, in the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we see your love for us in the suffering and death of your Son. Help us to follow him with courage, trusting that if we share his cross on earth, we will share his glory in heaven, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we prepare our gifts. Secret. 
pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. To the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. For through, though innocent, Jesus suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death was washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels in saying, we praise you, and in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Eucharistic reconciliation number one can be found on page 23. Page 23. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offering and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we one was lost and could not approach you, you love us with the greatest love for your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, and does not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the word of the cross, but before he stretched out his arms between heaven and earth, to become the lasting sign of your covenant. He desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to them saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice, full, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will pour out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, 
as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead and look forward to his blessed coming. We offer you, our faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim who reconciled to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit that they partake of this one bread and one chalice that, we, that they may be gathered into one body of Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart together with Francis, our Pope, Paul, our Archbishop, Eusebio, Frank, our auxiliary bishop, Peter, our retired bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we come before you, saints among saints in the hall of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, blessed apostles, Saint Gabriel, and all the saints, and without disease, brothers and sisters, whom we command to your mercy. Then free at last from the womb of corruption and made fully in a new creation, we shall sing you, sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. May this Holy Week help us to resolve to follow Christ more closely for a fruitful Holy Week. With faith and hope we pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him 
who take away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ.
Just a few echoes from the announcements you have, uh, have heard. Uh, that is, uh, for uh, Holy Thursday, part of the uh, liturgy is the foot washing. So if you have never been uh, you know, uh, participate in that part before, there's some sign-up sheet out there. So hopefully you can uh, uh, participate in foot washing. Just write out your name and we'll contact you and make sure you know uh, how to participate in that part. And also, uh, liturgical minister, make sure you uh, get your assignment, work out with your family, so make sure it's many different liturgies, and so certainly we need your help, but it's hard to find replacement if we don't work out all that of time, so uh, work out with your family and get your assignment for all these special liturgies. Uh, and so, um, hopefully, there's some uh, 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 calendar, or at least the schedule. Make sure you make take a bulletin home for the tritium. Everything starts at Holy Thursday, Friday at seven o'clock. Uh, Easter vigil at eight o'clock. Easter mass, uh, eight o'clock, nine thirty, eleven. So. I work with that, I memorize it, but <laughs> you have to, to check that with that. But thank you so much for those who helped with uh, 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 palms and uh, uh, clean it up, make sure everybody got of that. Thank you for many who beside the scene and the liturgical in reading the Passion reading. And, and so we begin uh, in a very uh, solemn uh, uh, Holy Week with this celebration. So have a great day week, everyone. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our final hymn is in the Gather Hymnal, number 163. Where's the body home?